So wonderful to see all of you here. So many of us were together just over a year ago in New Delhi for the first global conference. And it's such a great pleasure and really a deep honor to be here in Ahmedabad, the birthplace of Sewa, and the home to so many home-based workers. And to be celebrating with you the 20th anniversary of Convention 177. And it's also, of course, a great honor to be with Rainana Ben, whom I have worked so closely with for not 20 years, but 30 years. <laughs> and also to meet uh, Dr. Motiwal and to thank him for his support. And thanks to Sapna <laughs> and to Feroza uh, for inviting me to speak here today. And I'd also like to acknowledge uh, my WeGo colleagues, Chris Bonner. Chris, please stand up. Woo! And Shalini Sinha who've been very involved in the planning of this um, celebration. The WeGo Network, which I represent, was born out of the campaign for Convention 177. Reynana asked if anyone was there in June 1996 when the convention was passed. And I was not there, but I was there a year before in June 1995, and I visited Geneva to show solidarity to SEWA and the organizations of home-based workers that were fighting for the convention. And when I asked what I could do to help, I had just uh, recently joined Harvard University, uh, Ila ben Bat said, we need statistics. We need statistics on home-based workers. And the reason was that the employer group at the International Labor Conference were completely against the convention. The worker group was for it, but the deciding vote would come from the countries. And the countries needed statistics in order to be convinced of the size and significance of home-based work. So over the next few months, with another friend of Sewa, Jennifer Sebsted, uh, we collected data from wherever we could on home-based workers. And we published the report, and Ila Ben insisted that we put the Harvard logo on the report to give it even more credibility. And it was distributed at the discussion in 1996. And when the convention was passed in June 1996, Ila Ben and Renana Ben wrote me a postcard and posted it from Geneva. And the postcard read, the employers had their ideology, the workers had their statistics, the convention was passed. Wow. Woo! <laughs> And so WIGA was born out of this belief that statistics in the hands of workers is power. Um, I should note that Convention 177 on Homework was the first international labor convention on a specific category of informal worker. And I'm pleased to say that we have a second uh, Convention 189 on decent work for domestic workers. But back to Convention 177. It called for the recognition of home workers as wage workers, as workers. And it called for recognizing those who gave out the work to the home-based workers as employers, even if they distributed the work through intermediaries or contractors. It called for equal treatment uh, the same treatment that other formal wage workers would get, including the right to organize, freedom from discrimination, social protection, including occupational health and safety, 
as well as maternity benefits, and it called for fair remuneration. It also mandated um, that in home workers should be included in national labor force statistics, and it called on the member states to ratify the convention and to implement it through national laws, policies, schemes. And so over the past 20 years, I think it's 10 countries have ratified the convention. And all but one of those countries is in the global north. So we have our work set out for us. The one in the global south is Argentina. So we do have a, our work still on getting the convention uh, ratified. But several countries, or maybe just a few, have uh, taken provisions in the convention and implemented them in um, national laws. And I know that we take great pride in HomeNet Thailand having gotten a national law on home-based work in Thailand. So my remarks, I'd like to look back and look forward. So looking back, I am amazed at how far home-based workers and their organizations have come over the past two decades. In 1996, there was one regional uh, home net. That was home net Southeast Asia. Today, in 2016, we have three regional home nets. In addition to Southeast Asia, we have, of course, home net South Asia hosting this celebration. We also have home net Eastern Europe, which was represented at the global conference last year. And we're happy to say from the WeGo network side that we have identified and begun to work with um, producer groups or small co-ops of home-based workers in four countries in Africa and with producer groups and trade unions of home-based workers in six countries in Latin America. And we promise to continue to support those. In 1996, home-based workers, their activities, their contribution to the economy was not widely recognized or well understood. Today, in 2016, there really is far greater recognition of home workers and far greater recognition that home-based work is not a traditional activity that will go away, that it's part of modern global production systems and that home workers, as Reynana Ben said, can be found in a wide range of uh, sectors or branches of the economy, from the traditional labor-intensive garment making, textile weaving, shoe manufacturing, craft production, um, food processing. So much food gets processed and cooked in homes for the market. Electronic assembly, as Reynana Ben said, and packaging of pharmaceutical and other products. And I just hasten to add that in India, modern India today, where we are, that one in three women workers in outside of agriculture is home-based. Um, and if we added agriculture, it would be far higher. And one half of all manufacturing units in modern India are home-based. So we're beginning to get a really clear picture of the size and contribution. In 1996, through the convention, home workers uh, secured major recognition that they were workers and particularly that they were wage workers dependent on people further up the chain. Um, today, in 2016, home-based workers have also secured recognition of their home as workplace, of their need for secure housing tenure and basic infrastructure services. And I think another th um, concept that has emerged 
it's not a concept it's a reality but we've been able to highlight it is that the home worker in these global value chains covers most of the non-wage costs of production other than the raw materials. She provides the workplace, she provides the equipment, she pays for the electricity, and very often she's the one who pays for transport. The contractor doesn't go to come to her, she goes to him. So I think we have come a long way in sort of highlighting these additional needs and concerns of the home-based workers. In 1996, when we gathered the statistics on home-based workers, only seven countries had national data on home-based workers. Today, 2016, over 50 countries have official data on home-based workers. So we've come a long way in many regards. I'm also amazed looking back just over the past year since we all met in Delhi last year. And I should note that the global conference in New Delhi in February 2015, there were over 100 home-based workers and their supporters from 60 organizations from 24 countries which is no mean achievement. And these participants adopted the Delhi Declaration. So in 2000, we had the Kathmandu Declaration, which was a regional declaration, but the Delhi Declaration was a global declaration of home-based workers. And this calls for, of course, the ratific ratification and implementation of Convention 177, but in addition, it calls for better housing, basic infrastructure services that they need to make their work more uh, productive. Over the past year, since Delhi, home-based workers have taken part in a delegation that went to the International Labor Conference in June 2015 to fight for key provisions in another kind of ILO standard, something called a recommendation, not a convention. Has a little less power than a convention, but still it's a recommendation with a capital R. And this is recommendation 204 on the gradual transition from informality to formality. And some of the key provisions that home-based workers and others in the delegation have gotten into that recommendation is one, that most informal workers, including home-based workers, are vulnerable. They're not plucky entrepreneurs trying to escape taxation. And they need legal and social protection. And the other key, key provision, there's several, but another one is, that during the transition to formality, the livelihoods of the workers need to be preserved. So major achievements for home-based workers and other um, informal workers. The home-based workers, maybe at the country level, I don't know, but I don't think at the international level were involved in the campaign for the sustainable development goals. But throughout these new goals, um, there are provisions for decent work, productive employment, basic infrastructure services, inclusive cities, many of the things that home-based workers and other informal workers have been fighting for. So it's a very important moment that we have recommendation 204 and the, social, and the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, in addition to the convention. They reinforce each other and can be used. But also, um, over the past year, home-based work, the home as workplace, has been recognized in the preparations for Habitat 3, which is the third UN conference on housing and sustainable urban development. And thanks to the efforts, um, if I may say, of the WeGo network and delegations of informal workers, 
we have been able to put the home as workplace, the issues of informal livelihoods, the need for access to public space, so much more into the documents going to the uh, Habitat 3 Summit. And so we are hopeful that the new urban agenda which will come out of Habitat 3, which will be adopted by the global community, uh, will recognize homes as workplaces, informal settlements as industrial clusters, and also recognize that relocating informal settlements to the periphery of cities reduces um, the work opportunities and the productivity of home-based workers and other informal workers. So there's a lot happening on the global stage that I think can reinforce Convention 177. And then only last week, Reynana Ben was in New York. She's uh, the national coordinator of SEWA. She's chair of WIGO, one of the co-founders. And she joined this high-level UN panel on women's economic empowerment. Not women's empowerment, women's economic empowerment. And um, she and others will campaign, I know, for recognition for the economic empowerment of home-based workers and other women informal workers. So looking forward, I think we have a lot of momentum to build on. And tomorrow, right here in Ahmedabad, home-based workers, all of you, will be discussing a platform of needs and demands going into yet another international labor conference discussion, this time not for a standard, a general discussion, on global supply chains. And you will be able to articulate your needs and demands of the way in which um, home-based workers are inserted in enclosed supply chains. And there will be a delegation of home-based workers going to Geneva in June to take part in that discussion. So another opportunity to get our messages through. And looking forward, home-based workers will be part of a delegation going to Habitat 3 in Quito, uh, Ecuador, in October this year. And we hope that they will be able to effectively demand that urban informal workers and their livelihoods are integrated into the new urban agenda, the document coming out of Habitat 3. And looking forward, the WIGO Network is planning a regional workshop on home-based workers in Latin America because we've been able to identify now through a mapping exercise quite a few organizations in the six or so countries. And we'll continue to work with the groups that we've identified and begun work with in Africa. And so we're really hopeful that the home-based workers and their organizations in Africa and Latin America will join hands with the home nets in Southeast Asia, South Asia, and Eastern Europe, and that we may, in fact, be moving towards a global alliance of home-based workers in the near future. So let me conclude by congratulating the three regional home nets and your affiliates and uh, for all that you've been able to achieve over the past two decades and the fact that it looks like we are indeed becoming a global movement. So three cheers and best wishes for the next 20 years. <laughs>